remarkable human story and hopefully a new chapter opening for those three women and uh, the daughter. But also a new chapter for a country this time. Somalia has endured decades of war, unrest and disorder. But is it on the brink now of change? It has a functioning government for the first time in 20 years and a moderate level of security has returned to the capital, Mogadishu. Today there's been a major international conference right here in London aimed at rebuilding the country and convincing the world that it is open for business. It was hosted by the British Prime Minister David Cameron and his Somali counterpart Hassan Sheikh Mohammed and raised $300 million for development. In a moment, we'll be asking Hassan Dude from the Somali Economic Forum if investors really can be wooed into putting their money into the country. But first, Andrew Harding has this report from Somalia. We're heading into the Somali countryside. Until a few months ago, all this territory was held by Islamist militants linked to Al-Qaeda. But today, the market town of Afgoy is peaceful. The locals trying to get used to something anarchic Somalia has not had for 20 years, a proper central government. When left. The new police chief tells me, the Islamists are gone forever. We will not allow them back. To that end, a national army and police force, heavily funded by the West, are taking shape. There is hope in the air. There's no doubt the security situation here has improved dramatically in recent months. This could be the best chance Somalia has had for peace in a generation. But it is not a done deal. Somalia, after all, is a broken country. Young people, they don't have a job. They're jobless. They're doing nothing. They finish in high school. They don't have university. They don't have job. They don't have nothing. They just stay in home and play football. That's it. That's what's disturbing in my heart. I'm one of them, the young people. And you have no job? I have no job now. And so these men, the Islamist militants of Al-Shabaab, continue to recruit and to attack. At the weekend, it was this bomb blast in the capital, Mogadishu. Some 30 civilian casualties. Somalia's new leaders are in London today asking for more money from Britain and others. Corruption is a problem here, but the West can't risk abandoning Somalia again. Somalia has been an off the track for the last 22 years. We are rebuilding Somalia. Therefore, the cost that we may ask may not be something small. Outside, they're already clearing away the wreckage of the car bomb. This remains a dangerous country, but it has a new sense of purpose. Andrew Harding, BBC News, Somalia. So how do you attract investors to Somalia? Well, Hassan Dude runs the Somali Economic Forum. He joins me now in the studio. Welcome to the program. This is a country where a lot of country, other countries, international donors, will have a very strong interest in securing it, quite obviously. Um, but not only that, it has very strong potential from a business perspective, doesn't it? It, it, it does indeed. It has. Um, and Somalia uh, being in a strategic position, in a strategic position in, in, in Africa and in the whole um, the, the East Africa region, uh, of course, Somalia has a lot to offer. Um, if I would start with the with the natural natural resources that, that it has, although not so much talk is really about the natural resources. We we are now currently talking about um, what are the existing businesses and, um, and and things can investors actually invest in Somalia. So the booming sectors, of course, and they have a, they have a great potential would be the livestock, fishery, telecommunication and so on. So really there's endless to what you can do in Somalia. Mm -hmm. And also a very strong culture of entrepreneurial activity. Absolutely. Uh, Somalia is, Somalis are arguably the, the most um, active and influential uh, really businesses in, in, the whole Afri in, in the whole of Africa. Uh, you find Somalis anywhere in, in, in the continent. You go to South Africa, there are Somalis running small businesses uh, in East Africa. And we see them, those um, investors um, and, and, and business uh, people coming back to Somalia. So this is also hugely uh, diaspora driven. Yes, I mean, you certainly, obviously, as a result of the conflict, and this is true for any country that is in yes. prolonged conflict, you have seen a lot of Somalis elsewhere in the world. Do you see them now having a strong incentive not just to return their money, but to physically return as well and take part in, 
in this potential economic growth? Oh yes, there are there are actually many cases and success stories. In fact, I will be talking about one of one of those um, at the Somalia Investment uh, Conference tomorrow here in London. Uh, the the the, uh, the yeah, the agenda moves from the more political and security related issues towards business. Towards business, and it's clearly understood that if you really want to um, help a country to stabilize, of course, economy is is, is one big uh, is one big issue. Unemployment is so high in Somalia, and as you have previously seen, uh, a young yeah, the the young gentleman was talking about that. The the rate of unemployment is so high. Um, but let's not forget that the, the most, I would say, in, in most countries, you have the, the, the public sector that recruits. Now, you know, number of, that creates a number of unemployment, a, a number of empl employments. We don't have that in Somalia. So it's purely um, now dependent on the, on the private sector. And that is where the opportunities are, of course. And uh, if, we, uh, if those private sectors are invested, uh, and, and in my opinion, they have been um, underinvested and um, to an extent also unprotected. So uh, that, that's where you could see a, a growth, an economic growth and an instability, of course, in the long run. We saw Al Shabaab saying that they felt that there was a Western grab here for resources in Somalia. Are they so significant that that provides a fundamental incentive, do you think? Well, look, one thing, one thing for sure is that if you want to control a territory, you'll come up with an excuse to say that, you know, others are doing this and this is what we're going to do for, you know, for, for the country. Um, but I would say so much is really uh, currently, which is something that we are um, really looking forward to and, 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 and feel positive about is the, the shift on the, from the political focus and on the economy right now. And this is definitely will contribute to, um, you know, coming and stability in Somalia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Oh, thank you. Well, to France now, back to the Eurozone. The second largest bank in France, Société Générale, has reported a 50% slump in profits in its first quarter results of the year. Now, a weak economy in France has depressed the demand for lending, clearly. To compensate, the bank is now cutting costs by $1.2 billion. Fellow French bank Credit Agricole is making $850 million worth of cuts. It effectively marks the end of two decades' worth of expansion for the French banking sector. Jeremy Howe reports. This is a poor time to be a lender in France. The economy is set to slide into recession this year. Large factories are earmarked for closure. Thousands of employees are trying to protect their jobs. Many fewer people are prepared to take on more debt. People probably prefer to build buffers, to pile on uh, savings, rather than take more loans. And this is reflected in the situation in the housing sector, where house prices after having nicely rebounded after the recession of 08 or 09, are now falling again. So uh, definitely no appetite for mortgage uh, lending and not much of an appetite for uh, consumer lending. Sokgen saw profits slide to $480 million from $960 million for the same quarter a year ago. He put tens of billions of dollars aside in provisions for bad debt. Credit Agricole's earnings were up 50% on the same quarter last year, but this reflects the fact that back then it was writing off billions of dollars from the losses it made in the Greek financial crisis. French banks in general have seen their earnings under pressure, not only in retail banking, but also in investment banking. Investors have to wake up to the new normal in European banking nowadays, which is that, yes, Banks won't be able to make the profits that they had in the past because they're not doing the sort of risky business, for example, investment banking that they used to. But now they're focused on retail banking, which is more stable but has more modest profitability. Sokgen has placated its investors by announcing a $1.2 billion program of savings over the next two years, which will involve laying off some 600 staff. Credit Agricole says it will cut costs by $850 million by the end of 2016. Branch closures will be one of the main measures taken. Analysts predict that across the board, French banks could shed 10,000 jobs in the effort to maintain their profit levels. Jeremy Howard.